Mr. Mayor, I believe we have a 10 o'clock time certain. Yes, Commissioners, your first item is F9. It's a presentation from Kathleen Myers to assess existing service delivery for the Juvenile Arrest Avoidance Program. Commissioner Becker. Um, thank you, Mr. Merrill. Thank you, board members. As you may recall, on August 16th, um, the board received a presentation from the Juvenile Justice Task Force that updated you on the success as well as the structure of the Juvenile Arrest Avoidance Program, also known as, as our, uh, the Hillsborough Civil Citation Program. Uh, we learned that 91% of the youth that entered into that program had uh, participated in the program with success. Um, since, its, since its inception on June 1st, 2011. We also discussed um, and made you aware that this program by itself is a tool. It's a tool to identify at-risk youth um, who may um, have a propensity to, um, um, perhaps they have uh, committed a mistake and they have, they're at risk of entering further into the criminal justice system later on in life. And the important thing that we recognize and realize is that to keep the kids out of the system, we need early intervention and prevention programs. But the, uh, the JAAP program by itself is just that, it's a tool. Um, what's important, since most of these kids that um, commit these uh, types of mistakes, they're in need of services um, as well as their family. And we need those services in place and effective services and programs in place to help them get back on the right track. Without those services, these kids are further at risk for reoffending and getting back in the program. So the, as the task force recognized that, um, we engaged um, with Dr. Richard Dembel of USF to help us look at some of our existing programs that we have service-wise um, and also to come up with a, um, a uh, um, assessment of the current programs that we've got and then also make recommendations how we can uh, move forward in identifying some of those gaps and what's the best way to proceed. Uh, in summary, and you'll hear from Dr. Dembo in a moment, um, he looked at the big picture of the JAAP services from the initial contact with youth involved through the program and completion termination in order to access the capability of our uh, JDP to monitor the operations. Um, he also collected data to support the completion of future systematic evaluation efforts and he identified staffing and infrastructure resources needed to provide high quality JAAP services. One of the recommendations in his final report was that an impact or outcome evaluation uh, be pursued after the JAAP program had been fully implemented and enjoyed a period of stability. Um, and that's where uh, we bring uh, to you today um, the um, uh, report by Dr. Uh, Kathleen Myers, um, who's going to talk about how we can engage um, in those, in that type of evaluation. Uh, so at this particular time, I'd like to uh, call forward uh, Dr. Richard Dembo, um, who's going to go over briefly his evaluations, and then he'll introduce uh, Dr. Kathleen Myers, um, who will uh, describe of how the evaluation process uh, can move forward. Good morning, Commissioners, and thank you for letting us present to you this morning. We really deeply appreciate your support of the Juvenile Justice Task Force one of its achievements has been the development of the Civil Citation Program. And we were privileged last late spring and summer to do a process evaluation, as Commissioner Beckner indicated, of the JDT Program, which is the home of Civil Citation in Hillsborough County. We interviewed staff, we looked at records, we looked at elements in the MIS system. And as the Commissioner indicated a little while ago, we came up with a number of recommendations for strengthening the infrastructure of the program and poising it to do effective outcome evaluation. One of the key pieces of our work <coughs> was to identify the programs, service programs in the community that civil citation youth were referred to who were documented to have potential problems based on the JDP evaluation process. Those programs were listed for us and we asked staff about the programs and although staff knew something about the operation of the programs, a deep knowledge of these programs was not evident. We know from the past efforts we've made elsewhere in our efforts in the Juvenile Justice Task Force to get a more detailed picture of these community programs but have not been very successful. We thought because it is so critical in addressing effectively the problems of these youngsters who will come into this JDP program who have psychosocial issues to refer them to affect the programs in the community to learn more about their operation. 
the assessment tools that they use, how they translate the results of the assessment, the service recommendations, and the nature of the services these children receive, as well as the communication of these service programs back to JDP. Because in many ways, as the Commission indicated a moment ago, JDP is a referral resource. This is a very important, critical piece, the ultimate effectiveness of the a civil citation program. We also realized that we needed someone to come into the community who had no political ties, directly or indirectly, with any of the service programs to do an effective evaluation. Some years ago, I was a chief researcher in a national demonstration project in Miami-Dade County, one which operated the Juvenile Assessment Center, of which now Secretary Wansley Walters was the director. And Dr. Kathleen Myers, that we identified in one of our expert panels, became a major resource in having, helping us transform the operation of that program in Miami-Dade County. So when we came to the thought of having someone who was objectively available to review our community service programs to whom the civil citation youth are referred, I thought immediately of Dr. Myers as a successful candidate. And I presented her credentials to the task force that led to her invitation by Commissioner Beckner to present to you today. She's truly an outstanding person, well experienced in the field, and has a high sense of integrity. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for taking the time. What I'd like to do is briefly overview for you what I propose to do uh, in an effort to uh, move the process forward. So the overarching goal, and this is important, is really to design a prototype for evaluations that will examine the effectiveness. So what should come out of this work, what will come out of this work, is really a blueprint on how to move forward so that outcome evaluations can be done on a regular basis. Um, in order to do that, we have a, a variety of objectives. And I want to say that when you deliver services to kids in the court system, uh, or kids who are being waived out of the court system, it's probably the most critical time in a person's life. Because if you can stay, once you're in that system, you basically never get out. So this program is key to making kids do better and keep them out of long-term, high-cost programs. But the only way that it can be effective is if the programs that kids are referred to are effective, if they assess them well, if they do what they need to do, um, if they can show that what they do has meaning. So what we're planning to do is to go into the different services that these youth are referred to, and by demographic subgroup and risk profile. By demographic subgroup, we mean girls under the age of 12 who are Caucasian. By risk profile, it could be kids who are at high risk for uh, violence exposure. We're going to look at what the assessment practices are because remember, assessment is the key to the decision-making process. If the assessment is flawed or not geared to that population, uh, the kids will not get the services that they need. We will also delineate the range and type of services provided by service category and really ascertain are these evidence-based practices, manualized interventions, or, the, or are these program-grown tools that are not based in theory or practice. One of the things that we might get out of this, so I'm gonna just give you a brief overview, is we will design a system and present back of the instruments that are used, um, and this is an, an example. It, the Children's Depression Inventory, they use a questionnaire, it is reliable and valid, but unfortunately all youth who come into this program are assessed with this tool when it is really only used for the 12 and under population. So it is being used inappropriately, again, this is for uh, discussion purposes only, for the over 12 population. We may also find that there's a, an intervention that's designed to assist youth in modulating their behavior. Um, it is a best practice with program developed components, but there's no evidence that anyone ascertains whether this is being implemented properly, no staff training evidence, it's provided to all youth, although it was only developed for girls, 
who um, are over the age of 12. So again, this would signal that there may be some changes that need to occur. Um, we also need to assess the degree to which there are data, either MIS data, questionnaire data, survey data, that could or are used for outcome purposes. So as not to reinvent the wheel and to recommend things that may already be in place, what type of data are already being collected. So the strategy that I propose is to first conduct um, at least three can form an interviews of people within uh, the civil citation program so that we can get a good feel to design an appropriate data collection system and then ask programs to give us a variety of written materials, uh, different types of program contracts like policy and procedures manuals, assessment instruments, uh, manuals, uh, staff training, list of activities, and then conduct minimally half-day on-site interviews with program staff. So be at the program for minimally four hours uh, of which we will review the materials um, and I can share with you um, a draft data collection tool for that interview and continue with follow-up discussions um, and then record obviously uh, all the information. The deliverables that I will provide back will be a written report that includes all the next steps required for, for the evaluation, but it will list by agency and overall assessment tools, where changes need to be made, where the gaps in services are by subpopulation. Um, there will be a variety of debriefing discussions and come back for an on-site presentation. The cost uh, for this uh, will be $24,000. Uh, which includes travel expenses. And you can see up there the, the various uh, list of uh, expenses. Um, about $20,000 of that money uh, would come to me directly for the variety of things. I just want to let you know that because I've worked at length with Richard and because I've worked uh, in Miami-Dade with him on this project, and I believe this is truly in the best way to, to incur um, good services for kids. I've reduced my rate substantially uh, so that it, this could be a, a competitive proposal and we can kind of, and move forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. And now at this time, as she had listed the investment um, of this program, and that's we get into the discussion um, with, uh, with Mr. Clark from the Eckerd Family Foundation has come forward as he has seen value of the program and we'll talk about the investment from um, their perspective into this program. Mr. Clark. Thank you. Good morning, uh, commissioners. I'm Joe Clark, president of the Eckerd Family Foundation. Uh, I've been privileged to uh, participate in the work of the task force that you have heard in previous reports, and we're very pleased to support uh, this important piece of work. Uh, you've heard the, uh, Dr. Dumbo present uh, the background and the reasons for this, and I think Dr. Myers has given a, a pretty good uh, outline of the nuts and bolts of this. Um, in my view, this study will give us the data that we need to continue to make uh, better decisions for youth that come into our juvenile justice system. Um, it will complement the work of the task force and it will be independent and unbiased. And in times when uh, our systems are pressured to do more uh, with less, this is an opportunity to support uh, a piece of work that will promote cost-effective outcomes for youth in the juvenile justice system. Um, the Eckerd Family Foundation is very pleased to commit $15,000 toward this effort, and we would greatly appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. And that board member kind of brings us uh, today um, to uh, fund the balance of their proposal. Um, we have worked with our internal staff, Ms. McLeod and also Rob Parkinson, at search for additional grants and opportunities that may be available. And we were not successful as of this time to find those funding sources. And they're here to answer uh, those types of questions if you might have that. Um, so again, just in summary, um, we really believe that this is a critical um, evaluation process to help identify, uh, again, gaps in our services and also how um, evaluate the effectiveness of our services. And in my viewpoint, we've had numerous discussions as a board of how do we evaluate uh, non-for-profit organizations and evaluate their effectiveness. Um, using this as a, as a uh, prototype, I think with the success of this, we may be able to expand this larger to evaluate 
those non-for-profits that we were talking about um, in, su in previous board meetings. Um, so I look at this uh, as a two-pronged approach, that we have an opportunity to really uh, hone the um, services that we're offering for the JAAP program for at-risk youth and then be able to use this as a prototype and for a larger scale evaluation of our, of our other uh, non-for-profit organizations. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to, uh, I'm gonna open this up for board questions and then um, we'll state a motion um, for approval. Do you have any questions or comments uh, from board members? So then my motion board members would be um, to approve the allocation of $9,095 um, for the evaluation um, program or process that was presented to you today and then have staff come back um, report back to us on October the 3rd and list the appropriate funding sources that would uh, pay for this so moved was that, was that your motion that, that was my motion I'm sorry oh you second Commissioner Chris okay we got a motion by Commissioner Beckner second Commissioner Chris other comments please record your vote the motion carried five to zero thank you board members Thank you, Commissioner Beckner.